everyone vibe coding has completely taken off and maybe you've done some vibe coding yourself and yeah it's a lot of fun it's uh, it allows me to spin up a new app or, or just improve an app very quickly it does come at a cost of not knowing exactly how everything is uh, coded up so i would say there's a little bit more risk in terms of security from looking around there seems to be a couple of common uh, security risks so in this video i want to go over them and some of the measures that you can take to reduce your risk let's start off with the first one which is a very obvious one actually but it's about your api keys and that you can leak them now, this can happen in multiple ways what could accidentally happen is that an api key is sort of being hard-coded in here meaning the actual literal string of the key is in the normal app code here and therefore it may be shipped to the client meaning the browser and if it is indeed shipped to the browser the user may be able to find that uh, secret somewhere in the source for the website and that is obviously not what we want so when you are integrating some third-party tool in your app and this may be uh, payments or maybe some AI tool or a lot of other tools they typically have some uh, API key or even API keys some of them may actually be public keys so in that case that would not be a problem but some of them are secret keys meaning they should absolutely not be included in a client-side uh, environment so when you talk with your AI agent you also want to make sure that you do not uh, paste an actual API key in the uh, chat box. So with API keys, you do want to make sure that you have some kind of environment variable file. So in Next.js, the convention is typically to have a .env.local file to have local environment variables, but sometimes people will use simply .env. And then of course, you can see it's grayed out because I have included this as part of my uh, .git ignore, right? So this should should not be these files should not be included when i push to github for example in that case if that would if that were to happen then i would also leak this if it's a public repo right so if it's a public repo and i'm and i still put it in a separate file but then i accidentally also commit that file and push it to github I've also leaked the API key. So with API keys, you, you simply have to be very careful. You wanna make sure that you have your environment variable file set up properly. There is no leakage happening to the browser environment. All right, so second one is actually dependencies. So maybe you've noticed, at least I have, is that when you use AI to code, depending on which model you use exactly, but some of them are very eager to add dependencies. So when you say, for example, uh, build out a feedback form, right in that case and it may pull in all of these dependencies now many of these dependencies are totally fine to use of course but some dependencies may not be actually necessary and that is not only uh, wasteful but it can also become a security risk so we actually want to minimize the dependencies so what i like to include in my chat for example is something like do not use third-party tool because i know that if i don't specify that it may pull in dependencies that i don't one. There is actually a great article on this on the ArcJet website. ArcJet is also today's sponsor. I'll show you them in a second. But they have a great article here on trivial packages. Packages that are not really necessary, where it's quite debatable whether you really, whether you really need them. So you typically do want to take a look at your package.json. Which dependencies are you using? Are they actually necessary? Also make sure you pay attention to the versions that you're using. Is it okay that we're always downloading a new version if it's available or do we want to pin the versions? This is something you have to read up on and you want to be pretty aggressive with minimizing dependencies. It's basically other people's code. You have not written that code yourself. Other people have written that code and now you are pulling that into your own app. That is not something we want to do loosely. All right, third one I want to specify here is really important, I think, because I see a lot of, a lot of people are vibe coding an app that is using a third-party tool like an AI tool for example you're building an app that allows users to generate AI images let's say now to actually generate the AI image you may be using a third-party service and that third-party service will charge you as the app owner for that feature so the more requests you send over to that third-party tool the more you will pay for that type of feature you want to make sure that the rate limiting is properly taken care of because if you don't do that some user may spam you or they may actually actively try to harm you. And so that is not only a problem in terms of making your service uh, unavailable, right? Meaning uh, other people can't use it anymore because it's overloaded with all the traffic. There's an additional risk there of simply losing a lot of money, right? So when it comes to third-party tools and usage-based pricing, rate limiting is really important. 
And it's not just because of money, it's also simply because uh, we want to have good performance for our users, so we don't want to have somebody spam us and think about that as well. So I do want to introduce ArcJet, they are to sponsor, and they help a lot with these security risks. Uh, rate limiting is something they can help with, but they also do some other things like bot detection. You will have bots trying to do things that you don't want, uh, validating emails, and actually they help with some of the other common security risks as well in web applications. On the OWASP website, you can actually see some of the most common web application security risks. And so there are actually a lot of potential risks, unfortunately, that you have to pay attention to. So let me actually just show you what I can use ArcJet for here. It's very easy to set up. You can just create an account and you, you will get an API key. So in this case, we are talking about rate limiting, okay? So I can install ArcJet, I've already done that. I also already have an API key and put it in my environment variable. And now if I wanna li rate limit something, I can instantiate ArcJet. So let me show you what I can do here. Um, when a user submits that form, we're going to submit that here to a post API endpoint. So let's say this was actually an API endpoint where I'm going to invoke some third party tool, an AI tool, maybe that's going to use AI to analyze the incoming text, right? Sentiment of the feedback, let's say. And it's gonna cost me money to run that. So this is something that I wanna be a little bit careful about. So I can instantiate ArcJet right here. Now ArcJet has several different algorithms that we can pick from to determine how it should be limited. So here I'm using token bucket. If you hover it, it will give you an explanation here. So basically there's a user making requests to to us and they will get some bucket with some number of tokens. And so whenever they're making requests, we're going to subtract a little bit from that bucket, but we also refill it at some particular rate. If the bucket is empty, it's just going to be blocked until it's uh, refilled again. So this algorithm is useful when you wanna allow clients to make a burst of requests and then still be able to make requests at a slower rate. You can find the other algorithms here on the algorithms page. So they also have fixed window, which is a very simple one, only so many in let's say a minute. So in that case, is you could say for example 100 in 60 seconds there's also a sliding window so make sure you check out that page in case you want to know more about that so then i have this arcjet variable and then here in my api route i can use that to call dot protect on there pass the request to arcjet and here in this case i'm actually tracking it the user by its id so i would specify the user's id here and I can specify how many tokens to deduct. And ArcChat will basically decide if this request should be allowed or denied. So we get the decision right here, and then we can check if it's denied, we're already going to return out of here. We're not going to continue. I'm not going to invoke that potentially uh, expensive AI tool. I'm just going to return out of the request here and avoid all of that. All right, fourth one is really common, input validation and sanitization. So whenever you get data from a user, so in this case, the user is gonna submit a form, right? So whenever you have some kind of incoming data, it doesn't matter where it's from, you cannot completely trust that. So before you do anything with it, you have to validate it and sanitize it. So in this case, for example, we are submitting that data to this post API endpoint. And we're, so in this case, we are getting the data on our server side here and we're extracting the email and message. And we are assuming this is actually an email and an actual message, right? Now, typically at this point, we would want to do something with this data, perhaps store it in our database, right? So you would do something like use your ORM to actually insert it into our database. This is a bit risky because we don't know exactly what type of data this is, because technically somebody can invoke things on your server side uh, manually by themselves, right? So they they may not even use this form. They can actually just try to do it themselves programmatically and send you some strange uh, data that is not actually an email or message. Right, let's say the message that we get is actually this string, uh, some, just a quick example here, if something is true, return all, right? So if you get a string like that, this is not something we wanna work with. This is not something we wanna insert in a database. This is a bit risky because the user could submit something that could cause us to, let's say, leak data from our database. So before we do anything here, you wanna have a step where you validate it and sanitize it. Now ArcJet offers a shield option here as well, and it helps you with some of the common uh, attacks that we just saw on the OWASP website. So this is more like an umbrella. So in that case, we would use the shield option here. So actually at the beginning of the request, I would like to pass the request to ArcJet, and ArcJet will first make a decision if it's allowed or denied and if it's actually because of that shield option, we may say, uh, 
it's not allowed and will say you are suspicious. But this could be, for example, because ArcChat thinks there could be a SQL injection, for example. Right? So that's what we just saw with the weird uh, data that you get from the user. This is an additional layer of protection. Making sure that the incoming data is actually safe to use is probably one of the most important things you can do because data is our most important asset, basically. So next one actually has to do with bots. So when you publish something online, a website or app, you will notice that you will get a lot of requests, not from actual users, but uh, automated software. So these are bots and sometimes they are okay. For example, if they're from a search engine, they're trying to index your website or app so they can actually list them. These days you will also get uh, bots from uh, these AI companies that are scraping the internet. But sometimes you may get a bot that will actually uh, harm you or something that you do not want to allow. So I can also have some kind of bot protection here with ArcJet as well. So we can use the detect bot uh, rule here with ArcJet. So then we can specify the type of the category of bots that we do want to allow. So for example, I do want to allow the search engine bots because well, typically I want my website or app to be discovered. So if they're going to be listed or indexed in a, in a search engine, that is perfectly fine with me. So that is something I want to allow, but there could be other ones that you don't want to allow um, for monitoring for example i have set up a an uptime checker for my website so it will periodically make a request to my website that's also a bot i want to allow that as well if you share your website on uh, social media or in some chat application you you're probably seeing that the app will give like a preview of the website with an image sometimes so that is also something that is automated and do you want to allow that or not? Well, actually, yes. So typically, I would also want to allow that. They have the complete list on this URL, so you can decide which categories you want to allow and disallow. The last one I want to mention here has to do with sensitive user information. This also has to do with, uh, I would say it's quite similar to input validation and sanitization. It's a little bit different. So you typically don't want to you typically want to be very careful with information that is considered sensitive. This can be personally identifiable information because of regulation, for example. So people's names, but also their credit card numbers, obviously, or, or their email address. So typically, you do not want to add more input fields than you really need. So I would say it's already debatable if I should add an email address here. Do I really need an email if I want to get feedback from somebody, probably not. So you could even argue that I should remove this entire input field here. Basically, as a principle, you do not you do not want to collect more information from the user than you really need. But even if I would remove this, a user could still submit feedback and say something like, page is not working, please let me know when it's fixed on my email. Right? And then they could give their email. Right, so they can, of course, submit any kind of information this way, even including the credit card number or phone number. And it may not even be on purpose. They may actually just copy and paste something from their email, let's say. And by accident, there was some sensitive information in that copy paste. And now that's submitted to your servers. I don't want to store users' emails in my database, for example. So ArcChat does help here with uh, forms, actually including signup forms. But for uh, sensitive information here, we can simply check for uh, sensitive information and I can stack these rules by the way, right? So I've been replacing them, but I can just add more if I want here. So I don't have to remove this, but just for clarity sake here. So for example, if I don't want to allow emails in this request, I can try using RChat to prevent that. And so here, I could deny the requests with emails in there, but there are other options here as well. If I use uh, intelligence here, you can see I can also say I don't want any credit card numbers or uh, these are the ones. Now, if you have a signup form, uh, ArcChat actually has some uh, rule for that, protect signup. So with signup, users are going to typically have an email address as well. With email, you do not only want to make sure that the email follows like a logical uh, shape so you should not only check if there's actually like uh, something at something.com it's also making sure that for example the user uh, email is not invalid or there is something with their mx record or maybe you do not want to allow disposable emails for example sometimes bots will try to sign up that's maybe not something you want and you also want to rate limited perhaps so you can do a bunch of things in one they also have standalone email validation by the way so if you want to validate email uh, you can do that uh, by itself as well. Now in the dashboard, by the way, you can also see the requests that were denied by ArcJet. So I've used ArcJet before and you can see in some other app I had 
it actually denied one of the requests and it was because of a sensitive info reason so it gives you the reason for why it was denied actually i can also filter for only the requests that were denied so you can get all of them in one go so that's a nice overview that you get here in the dashboard as well in any case i want to wish you a lot of success with the five coding i think it's totally fine to do we just have to be a little bit more aware of the potential security risks that we are taking hopefully this helps you out i want to thank arcjet for sponsoring the video make sure you check them out you can find a link in the description and i want to thank you for watching have a nice day bye